Well, good day, everybody. Welcome back to this channel. Well, I have a little friend here, this little guy. I, I think I'm going to call him the running man, at least in his current configuration. He's one of these little wooden figures that people use to practice sketching the human figure. And uh, I'm not going to practice sketching the human figure today. I have my 8x10 box camera set up. Yeah, I'm going to do a little bit of direct positives and see how they come out. I had a good time doing some 4x5 still life subjects. I did this little glass angel figure in 4x5 with the direct positive process, and I really like the results. I documented my process uh, fairly detailed in a blog article, which I will link down below in the description. But just for you guys who are interested in uh, the whole direct positive process, how it works with my new laser cut sliding box camera with a Fujinon Xerox machine lens and a manual shutter, just a, a pull shutter. There's no mechanical shutter. So you need exposure times at least of a second or more duration in order to accurately time these kinds of exposures. So I'm using some uh, LED lights here. These are regular medium size household light bulbs that are daylight balanced LEDs. Their equivalent light output is, is like equivalent to a 100 watt incandescent. I'm currently using two lights here, one light here, but I'm going to turn on the second light here for this portrait so we have plenty of light okay so with the all four lights turned on now i'm using my Seconic l308 su light meter what i've done with the camera is i've focused it on the subject which is right about here and then what i have to do is i have to figure account for bellows compensation or close-up compensation so the lens operates only at f4.5 it's the fujinon xerox machine lens it does not have a variable aperture and you can't stop down the aperture externally because there's too many glass elements. It'll just vignette if you try to put a f-stop on the outside of the lens. So I operate it wide open at f4.5, but for this close-up uh, photography, you have to account for the so-called bellows extension factor. And what I do is the lens is nominally a 240 millimeter focal length at infinity focus. And I'm focusing here about 360, I think, is what I measured. So you have to basically take the ratio of 360 to divide by 240 and multiply that by your f-stop of 4.5, which comes out to an f-stop of about 6.6. .6. And uh, so when I meter the scene here, and at f 6.6, .6, it comes out to a two-second uh, two exposure. That's at ISO 3. However, the... Paper I'm using, I rate it at three stops below ISO 3. I can't get to that ISO reading directly on this meter because the meter only goes down to ISO 3, so I just bump up the F number three stop, one, two, three, and that comes out to six seconds, six seconds exposure time. So let's do a six second exposure time here in the studio here under these four bright lights and then go process it and see what we get. Well, okay, there's our little figure sitting on our video table with my lights here is the camera and uh, so now i have to focus the image on the ground glass that's pretty good right there focused right on the ridges on the torso so now i'm going to just set the clamp like that so when i pull it back it'll stop it make sure it's fully seated then pull the focus back to the hard stop of my clamp like that. Then pull the dark slide, refer to my new Seiko watch. All right, six seconds, huh? Let's see, here we go. There we go. I might give it a second or two longer. There we go, that was about six or seven, probably closer to seven seconds. And put in the dark slide. We're ready to process. In the 8x10 configuration, I'm using my bottom set of trays here. So I have developer, LPD, paper developer, and I'm mixing it at 1 plus 4, which is a concentration ratio of 1 to 5. Then I have rinse water with a little bit of vinegar in it as a slight acidic uh, rinse. Then we have the citric acid and the peroxide, and I usually do two, sometimes three rounds, 30 seconds in the citric and about a minute in the peroxide. When it comes out of the peroxide, finally, rinse it off so it's uh, 
neutral pH and then we will flash it with light under this bright LED light for maybe half a minute and then from there it goes back into the developer for the final development step. So this is after two bleaching steps. The uh, base of the table where the little pad is and the stripes didn't totally bleach out and that's kind of normal for things not to totally bleach out sometimes. I'm just rinsing off the excess peroxide. I'm going to put this print up here and now I'm going to fog it for a good 30 seconds and now you're starting to see a little bit of a latent image coming up just from the auto development action of the emulsion and being fogged with light. So I gave this one a five second pre-flash also. All right, now this is the part where we put it back into the developer, get it going in there quickly. Increase our exposure a little bit so you can see it better. Got some scratches up on the top where I expected it because I was getting it out of the film holder. I was having some issues. I'm going to go a full two minutes on this development. Well, it's a pretty good image, I think, overall. There may also be a tong mark, so I'm going to try using my gloved hands instead of tongs just to change things up. And my pre-flash time, I did five seconds on the pre-flash. Um, I think I'm going to try ten seconds. Okay, so this is our picture with ten seconds pre-flashing. Give it at least thirty seconds. Make sure we re-expose all of the remaining silver halides in the paper. All right. All right. And the second developer, or the developer the second time, I should say. It's the same developer as the first time. Let's see what happens here. Is 10 seconds pre-flashing too much? We don't know yet. What I'm trying to do is get the highlights in the background to be a little bit wider by increasing the exposure. The shadows look like about the same, roughly. We'll have to compare it here shortly. Okay, so this is the picture with 10 seconds pre-flash. This is with a 5 seconds. Of course, my 10 second one does not have the scratch that this 5 one does because I was using my hands instead of my tongs. The tongs are problematic. Um, as far as the highlights go, really they're about the same. I don't see any difference. And as far as the shadows, um, it's possible that this is slightly lighter, the 10 seconds is slightly lighter than the 5 seconds. So the pre-flashing doesn't really affect the highlights as much as it does the shadows. So the challenge continues to try to get brighter highlights. Since this is a bright white painted closet door being brightly illuminated, this is about as white as it gets. Maybe the highlights on the figure's head is a little brighter, but be nice to have a little bit lighter. See, this is white. The tray is white. This is just sort of light gray. It'd be nice to have a little bit lighter tones in this. But, well, for now, it works. It's pretty reliable thus far. Well, since I have the chemistry already poured up, I think I'm going to do a daylight outdoor scene just to compare. Um, I'm going to give it the same ISO 3 plus 3 stops exposure. And I have gone ahead and pre-flashed the paper 10 seconds because I suspect my scene is going to be pretty high contrast. So as we flip around here, what I'm going to be shooting, basically in the foreground is going to be this shaded part of my lawn that's covered in leaves. And the background is going to be more brightly lit, the wall, the back wall with the shadows of the tree branches. And so I already have that composed upon 
the camera's ground plastic screen. And I do have the camera configured now for landscape orientation, just by pulling out the box and rotating at 90 degrees. So I'm gonna go figure out my exposure here. Okay, so I'm going to meter the highlights on uh, reflected mode, which is gonna be much faster than I can time by hand, 90th of a second. And then, well, then you have to add three stops, right? One, two, three. So it's going to be a thirtieth of a second. Then, metering the grass, the shaded part, f 4.5, roughly, and add. So it's about one and a half seconds for the shadow reading. So I'm going to give it probably just as fast as I can do it is a, is a second, reliably, and we'll see what happens. Right. 1001. Okay, hopefully that will be sufficient. Alright, so this is the rinse after the perox second peroxide. This is what it looks like when it's been bleached. There's a little bit of highlight still left, or maybe that shadows. I can't quite figure that out. Okay, we're gonna put it in here and we're going to fog it for 30 seconds or so. Turn down the exposure so you can see it a little bit better. This is a 100 watt equivalent LED light bulb, white, daylight balanced LED light bulb. Now I can start to see a little bit of the image coming up, the little short back wall behind the lawn, some of the shadows on the wall perhaps. Okay, I turned off the fluorescent light fixture because it tends to make funny banding in the video. So, anyways, here we go, the second development step. Where are we at? 8 o'clock, so we'll go till 10, two minutes. So, I think the back wall is going to be overexposed just because it was looking, exposure should have been 30th of a second. We'll see, however because we have been challenged with getting sufficient highlights that aren't muddy and gray looking, so maybe this will be fine. So we'll go a full two minutes on this. Yeah, the shadows in the foreground, the shaded part should have been a little bit less. I think I should have... I have some dark shadows right here behind those two tree branches and the neighbor's backyard, but overall I think I probably should have given it a little less exposure. Uh, it's a little overexposed. Interestingly enough though, the bright wall, while it's brighter than the gray background of my studio shot, it's not paper white, you might, might notice. So this process continues to challenge us with getting really bright highlights. Here we're already starting to roll off on terms of highlight detail. You're losing the highlight detail, uh, very low contrast on these shadows, So, but you're not achieving paper white yet. So yeah, that's kind of a challenge with this process. My Xerox lens, wide open, which, well, it only runs wide open at f4.5, but it has some interesting swirly bouquet going on here on the corners, which is really interesting. The camera was focused at the wall, so this is an out-of-focus area right here in the foreground. That's interesting. And processing it by hand with gloves instead of tongs, it looks like I don't have any scratches. This emulsion is rather sensitive to scratches. Well, I'm going to try another exposure. I'm not going to pre-flash the paper, and I'm going to try to do quicker than what I did. About as fast as I can do an exposure here. We'll see what happens. All right. Film holder's in place. Lens cap is on. Pull back the focus to where it's preset. Pull the dark slide, and that was a little less than a second, I think. No pre-flashing. Mm. 
this is the rinse bath after the peroxide and citric acid bleach. All right. And we'll do our fogging exposure for about 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Now close the rinse, open up the developer tray again. And uh, Slip it in there. We got 840, 8.50, call it 10 o'clock, 10 on the timer. All right, so let's watch the, the action happen. See if this approximated lens cap exposure was any better. Certainly no more pre-flashing. I think the shadow's already look a little richer and that's good well I think overall this second outdoor shot looks better their shadows look nice and rich in the corners I have a little bit better shadow detail on the brightly lit, brightly lit wall now I do notice that my little sun face figure which you may not be able to see here is still very poor separation from the wall because they're both brightly lit but it's better than the previous print well they've been squeegeed and they're drying now we're going to look at them a little bit later well this was a fun experiment a lot of my photography around the house here involving paper negatives or direct positive reversal processes or whatever they're experimental and i'm trying to dial them in so yeah we did some still life a couple landscape shots i do like these still life images especially when it's in the depth of winter and the light outside may be dim not much blue or uv light i have these uh daylight balanced led light bulbs here that i use on my video table and they seem to put out enough blue and uv light to sensitize the paper pretty well uh, this was an interesting little subject matter, the little running man figure, as I call it. So the first image was exposed uh, for six seconds total. That includes the bellows extension for the box camera being close up. And again, what I did with that is I simply measured the focal length of the camera, divided that by the infinity focal length of 240, 240 millimeters, and then multiplied it by the exposure time, which would have been two seconds. And when that came out to about six seconds exposure time. This first one had a pre-flash of five seconds. I was just experimenting to see what would happen with the pre-flashing, how it would affect it. And it turns out the pre-flashing really affects your shadow detail, not your highlight detail. So I was trying to get these highlights of the closet door behind me uh, brighter, but it didn't really happen that way. Um, the next image was 10 second pre-flash of the same exposure and what the only thing really different I notice is the shadows of the table here were a little lighter. So that sort of does verify that the pre-flashing certainly affects the shadows, not really much the highlights. The other thing I got on the first image was some scratch marks and tong marks on the upper part of the image. And uh, for the rest of the images, I went ahead and just used my latex gloved hands for that. So the second image I really do like. This is a nice still life picture with this grade two paper. Probably eventually I'm going to buy some grade three and maybe grade four paper from Freestyle Photo just to see if the intrinsic higher contrast gives me a little bit punchier of an image. And then the last two images, uh, since the first two were done under uh, studio lighting setup, control lighting, I wanted to really see what daylight would be like. Of course it's winter, but it was bright sun and we have harsh shadows. So the first exposure was a 10 second pre-flash and I metered the uh, bright wall in the backyard and that was going to be about a 30th of a second, which I can't really reliably do with a lens cap shutter. The shadow of the lawn was more like a couple seconds. So I think I tried to do one second. It was probably a little bit longer than one second. But with that pre-flash, the uh, foreground, which should have been darker, was a little too light and the shadows of the trees, uh, the tree branches on the bright wall, that bright wall is starting to get really blown out. You're starting to roll off the contrast on the highlights, so a little bit too much exposure there. But the uh, last exposure I did without any pre-flash, again, it was approximately one second shutter with the lens cap, and I do like the tones on this. I like the way the uh, lower corners start to get dark. Of course, I like that so-called swirly bouquet in the out-of-focus part in the foreground with that Xerox lens, and I'm starting to see better 
detail and the highlights on the bright wall. I can see the shadow of the trees reflected there. This little short brick wall at the base of the, the bigger wall it has nicer tones. And the neighbor's backyard trees, there's some nice dark shadows in those tree branches, etc. So that was a pretty good exposure. If you can calibrate your elbow for a one second hand exposure, it works pretty well. So I didn't have any horrendously gross problems like I did last Sunday when I was doing some experiments with the multi-grade paper and colored filters over my camera lens. I had some really horrendous processing issues. Uh, the only thing you might have noticed, for instance, on this last picture of the no pre-flash outdoor scene, you might have seen when it came out of the peroxide bleach that some of these dark areas in the corners down here and up here in the trees behind the wall, those had kind of a brownish tint, like a coppery tint. Um, I've seen this before. I've attempted to do more bleaching, like three or four or more steps of the, the bleaching to get rid of them. And I've also tried a sodium sulfite bath after the bleaching step. And none of that has gotten rid of that tone. I don't really understand why it happens occasionally because there's been other exposures where the uh, negative bleaches out almost completely to paper white with virtually no uh, artifacts left. So um, is it an artifact of my citric acid or the peroxide is exhausted maybe? I don't think so because I'm using new chemistry that I've just poured up this week. So anyways, there's some things to learn still. But other than that, there really weren't any bad artifacts. I came up with a fairly decent image in all four of these, other than my own uh, exposure goofs. I think it's a reliable process within the constraints of really long shutter speeds required because the ISO is so slow, it's way below ISO 1. Apparently the contrast, you can't really control it that much, it's just whatever the paper is. Um, I do like the fact though that my lighting gives me some modeling, some highlights and shadows, so you really have to control the lighting in a studio setup to get a nice image like the Running Man figure. Going forward, I think I am going to try some grade 3 or maybe even grade 4 paper for this. Uh, one of the things I do notice though on all these is if you look at the brightest highlights in the image, compare it to the paper white, we're not getting anywhere close to paper white and that might be intrinsic to the process. There you go, more testing on the direct positive reversal process using citric acid and hydrogen peroxide. As always, if you have any questions or any comments, leave them down below. I'd love to hear them. I'd love to have a dialogue with you guys. And until next time, stay creative. Have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs>